Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, we post writing tips, unboxings, book hauls, book reviews, and the occasional vlog. And today I have a book review for you guys, and it is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. If you guys saw my recent unboxing, the link's above me now. If you haven't, this book is another one from the book club I am in with Jazz over at Red Panda Reads. And as always with the book club books, it is vastly different to what I usually read. I wasn't disappointed. Before we get into that review today, don't forget if you like what you see to subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to see as soon as I upload, click that little bell down below. Your support means a lot, so thank you guys so much. As always, with my book reviews, I'll read you guys the blurb first. Stella and Desiree are identical twins growing up together in a small southern black community until at age 16 they run away. Years later, everything about their lives is different, their families, communities and racial identities. One sister lives with her black daughter in the same southern town she once tried to escape. The other sister secretly passes as white and her husband knows nothing of her past. Still separated by many miles and just as many lies, the fates of the twins remain intertwined. What will happen in the next generation when their own daughter's storylines intersect? This book was shortlisted for the Women's Prize of Fiction 2021 and it has so many reviews. Sunday Times says a bold, skillful storyteller, it's a clever balance and act indeed to pair such heartbreaking material with a narrative that's so much fun. We also have The Vanishing Half is an utterly mesmerising novel. It seduces with its literary flair, surprises with its breathtaking plot twists, delights with its psychological insights and challenges us to consider the corrupting consequences of racism on different communities and individual lives. I absolutely love this book and that's by Bundine Everesto. And then on the front we have yet more reviews. We have Utterly Mesmerising, I recommend it highly, which is Marion Keys. And then inside guys, we have a whole back page, a whole page, and then yet more pages of reviews of this book. I'm not going to read them all to you because there's too many. So this book has really hit it off. Now, as always with these book reviews, I will do a spoiler free section first and then I will warn you that spoilers may be coming for the second half and let you know what time to skip to if you don't want any spoilers at all. But this book is very well written. To begin with, with this book, I thought it was repeating itself. It kept saying how they're born in this town and they're born in this town and that it just constantly a reminder that they're born in this town because telling us once apparently wasn't enough. So when I first started it, I was kind of concerned and thought that this book was going to tell me everything, that I wasn't going to be able to get into it. But then you get sucked into these characters' lives and it stops repeating itself so much. I don't know why it does it in the first few pages, but it does stop. So apart from the obvious, which is this book tackling racism with one sister passing as white and one sister returning a black community. It also takes on some ugly truths about inequality. It just keeps going. And the other thing that it definitely highlights is once you start to lie, there's just no stopping it. How do you stop lying when you're so used to it? And how do you end the cycle? Once you've lied for so many years, it's hard to go back and be honest, which this book really shows. In terms of, as I was saying, that it tackles other things as well as racism, on page 90, I have a quote for you guys, which is, maybe he likes you. This is in response to a boy bullying Jude. It is something that I'm sure every girl has heard, or at least every girl who was born before for the 2000s. Ugh. It was so infuriating being told if boys like you then they'll bully you. No, it's just called bullying and harassment. There is no liking involved in this. But that is part of the interesting thing about this book as well. So it's based in the 60s to the 80s in Southern America. It's right in the time that things were segregated and also when things started to change. And what's really interesting is you begin the story from the two twins point of view and as they grow up you gradually go into their daughters and it's really kind of uplifting to see how much things have gradually changed just in that time period but also heartbreaking because things still need to change and it's terrifying how not so long ago it was that bad. What this book also does is it is very character driven so if you are mainly into epic sci-fis and epic fantasies where it's about the world build and things like that it's not going to be in this book. It is entirely character driven. These people are living normal 
average lives in a world we're all fully aware of, so everything relies on their emotions and how Brit Bennett gets them across to the reader. Yet another thing that this book goes into, I swear the list is just getting longer and longer. So we have racism, we have equality, we have LGBTQ rights, we also have divorced parents. It's written from the various different points of view of someone from a divorced family. You have the mum's point of view, the daughter's point of view, and also outsiders' points of views. And it's really interesting on page 91 how Jude, one of the daughters, reacts to what her dad did. Again, spoiler-free zone, I'll go into detail in the next section, but just to make you aware, it's another thing that this book takes on. So I really want to go into a lot of details um, about this book, so I'm going to say spoiler alert now. If you haven't read this book or you don't want to have any spoilers and skip to this time here, but I'm going to say spoiler alert with Jude and the dad. Jude is Desiree's daughter, so Desiree is the twin who remains in her black community and she ends up with a man who beats her. She leaves him, definitely should do that. The interesting bit is that Jude, the daughter, because she still wants to love her dad, as a child separates the man who beats and hurts her mother and the man who is her father. When Desiree first takes Jude away, Jude really wants to see her father again. She wants her father to find them, not realizing as a child that the person harming her mother is her dad, which is horrible and heartbreaking to read because just, that must be so hard to deal with. I, d I can't imagine how much pain that must cause. And for Desiree as well, she's been beaten. She's taken her daughter away to safety and yet her daughter blames her for her dad not being there? Ouch! On to this point, Desiree's story where she runs away with her sister, she then meets this man, has Jude, and then she moves back to this community. Now, at this point, we know that all this time, Desiree has been searching for Stella, her sister. So we know that she hasn't found her by the time that Jude is old enough to go to school, and then also old enough to go to college. Another interesting thing that this book goes into is unmarried couples. So. Desiree leaves her husband. She never actually officially divorces him, but she ends up in a relationship with Early, who is a bounty hunter who's trying to help her find a sister, but they end up together. And he's a really good stepdad. I mean, obviously he goes away for work a lot, which is the only bad point, but he's a really good guy. And it's really refreshing that Desiree gets to be with a guy like him after having such a bad relationship beforehand. And now I feel like it's Desiree and Early's relationship and them looking after the grandma and having this tight family that helps Jude when she then moves away to be accepting and open and generally a really nice person, which is when she meets Reese, who is our transgender character. You never learn about Reese's past fully because Reese doesn't want to talk about it, but you do find out how they have sexual boundaries because Reese obviously does not want her to touch above the thigh or around the chest because Reese, for all biological terms, is still sadly female when mentally and outwardly they are male. That story is really interesting and how Jude ends up with Reese and then surrounded by the queens. It's such a heartwarming part of this tale and they are my favourite couple and my favourite story. The heartbreaking part of Reese and Jude though is when they're older near the end of the book and everyone's getting on again and then they're constantly bugging them about getting married and then when that, they're not, you know, budging on that, they're then bugging them about children and obviously we know as the reader that Reese and Jude cannot biologically have children. It, they just, they can't right now and in terms of the marriage, Legally still, Reese has not changed their documents, so until Reese is recognised by the state as who they really are, they also cannot get married because at this point of time, same-sex marriage is also illegal, so you cannot get married just on paperwork in Reese's old name, and they can't get married with Reese now because Reese doesn't have new paperwork, and it's so heartbreaking but also so real and down to earth and also just the fact that they can't tell their families because of how people could react. <sighs> 
So Desiree's story, in my opinion, goes from really bad and really tough, the abusive husband, the problematic life, being poor, looking after her mother, to ultimately being a very happy life. She takes over the coffee shop, her daughter and her have a very good relationship, her daughter has a loving partner, she has a loving partner, they're back in the hometown where they are accepted finally. So it goes from bad to good. Stella, which we get to on page 172, Stella is the sister who passes as white, so she has a white person's life in this time period. Now, for me, Stella's story gets downhill real bloomin' fast. So Stella's story, honestly, just made me want to watch Desperate Housewives, because that is basically what she has become. She is a housewife with a rich husband in the American suburbs. She's got the pool, the big house, the maid to do the laundry and the chores. So all she does all day then is a few chores like shopping. She tries to cook, but it doesn't sound like she's a very good one. And she drinks, because why not? And what seems to happen is because she's trying to pass, she can't get close to anyone because she always feels like she has to hide something. So this means with all the other housewives on this estate, Stella is not very close to them and she doesn't know how to be. Now all this becomes very difficult for her when a black family moves in across the street. Now Stella ends up gravitating towards them and they become really good friends and yet still she's hiding something from her. But this also highlights what happens when you are lying to the extreme like Stella is. Because Stella is trying to pass off as white, she ends up being even more racist and cruel, more than her husband who is white, who doesn't seem to mind about new neighbors, doesn't seem, you know, doesn't seem bothered, but she is proper harsh. And it's horrible because you know, she can't have those opinions because that would involve those things happening to her. But because she's trying to be so white, She's trying to hide everything. Oh, and on page 172 to 173, this is highlighted to the extreme when she drags her daughter away from playing with the neighbor across the street. She doesn't want them to be friends. They cannot be close. And so she drags her away and says the dreaded word, which I will not repeat. And then she slaps her daughter. Her daughter doesn't understand what's going on. And as her daughter grows up, this causes so many problems for her. She is such a uh, it's like chaotic person. She doesn't know where she belongs. She struggles to form good bonds and good relationships, has commitment issues, all because her mom spends her entire life lying. But what is really nice is Stella's opinions do not extend to her daughter. Her daughter ends up friends with Jude and Reese and ends up traveling abroad. And some days she says she's white, some days she says she's black. She finds out about her past, so she knows she's technically half black, and she goes with it and she experiments and tries to find out who she is. The other thing that this does show is that the stereotypes of the sexism, the racism, all these harmful things that we as a human race do are not born in us. We are taught these behaviors because Stella's daughter has no opinion at all of the neighbor's daughter until her mom gets involved. And that is an adult stopping a child. The children do not care. Sometimes we really need to just go back. On page 217, we go back to Jude's story. And this is where Jude meets Kennedy. Kennedy is Stella's daughter. And it is just such an interest. And this book is just, it's really good. It's because it's character driven. I can't tell you much about the world. and like, It's our world. But the details in these characters and this plot is insane. And when these two daughters find each other, it's so hard because you're like, you know things, but they don't. And they're trying to tell each other, but also not. And again, it just really hits into how bad lying actually is and how far those lies spread and hurt people. So welcome back. If you guys had to skip the last bit, we're now back to spoiler free zone. So we're going to do overall views and a, and a few techniques that Brebenna is using in her writing in order to get this book across. So welcome back. We'll continue. The start of the book has very long chapters, which is possibly another reason it took me a while to get into. But as soon as you get near the climax and all the families start to mix up, all the chapters get shorter, so it becomes more snappy, more thriller-like, more drama. And you start ending on a lot more cliffhangers as well, which is a really good writing technique. It's sort of a slow build, then hits the climax. 
And then you have the very small roundup at the end. Now, as I said at the start, it's also very, very character driven. Now, a way that Verbena is keeping this interesting is all the introspection that the characters have. So everything the character does, they are thinking about before and afterwards. And as the reader, you get to know this, which helps you understand what the character is doing. You can really feel for pretty much all of the characters in this book and understand their pain and see why they're doing things, why they're not doing things and sort of think, you know, what would you do in that situation? Kennedy, Stella's daughter, is a complete product of her upbringing. They could be the same as Jude, they could be such a nice person, but it is her upbringing that has turned her into what she is. And the same with Jude, she could have ended up in such a different circumstance if Desiree hadn't done what she had done. Again, it's just a really interesting, seeing the two generations, it just shows so much what your childhood can do to you. It's very well written, characterization is perfection, and definitely my favorite characters personally are Reese and Jude, and then Desiree and Early, I adore their relationship, and then Stella. <laughs> Oh, Stella changes so much, and Kennedy, bless her, I just feel sorry for. Definitely, reader, it goes into so many things. As I say, it tackles racism, it tackles sexism, LGBTQ rights. We also go into how behaviors are learned. It is phenomenal, really. So, I think we know then what I'm gonna say. For marks out of 10, I would give this book 10 out of 10. It is just, it's not what I normally read. now. I can't, you know, I'm reading this and marking it as a character driven modern day book. We is not going against the fantasy I read, it's not that type of book. But for what it is, I adored this. It is so interesting. You learn a lot and uh, it's heartbreaking that this could have been happening only like 40, 50 years ago. That's insane. And that's it for my book review. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see as soon as I upload, click that little bell down below. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Tumblr. I post general bookish pictures, as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.